I mean, just give us an update on where we are. Obviously, Rishi Sunak um, made this bold claim that he was going to get through this backlog by the end of the year. Looked like it was slipping. He wasn't going to hit it. How's it looking today? Um, in terms of the asylum backlog, uh, the government seems to have made some progress on it. But the thing we really need to look at is how have they made this progress? So to give them some credit, some of that has been by speeding up on the processing. And we've always said that that should not be that difficult to do for people coming from certain territories, for instance, Afghanistan. And so if we look at the boat crossings, the small boat crossings, of which there are about 45,000 people to the last measure of this, 25% um, of those are from Afghanistan. Now, it's very unlikely that Britain's going to be sending people back to Afghanistan. And of course, we know there are other major headline countries like Syria, Yemen, Iraq, Iran, Eritrea, where very few people fail to get asylum in the UK. And these make up the bulk of people seeking asylum. So, so part of that has been processing those claims with more expediency, more common sense, and that brings the figure down quite remarkably. Um, the other thing that's happened, though, is this idea about withdrawals. Now, some of that is down to asylum seekers themselves who've been in the system for a while, saying, and we talk about this legacy, you know, people who are in the system before June 2022, who either end up in families or relationships or have other visa routes available to them in country visa application routes. So they withdraw their asylum claims because they can stay here and there's something to get fed up with it and, and withdraw. But that's very, very few. What appears to be, and we're still looking at the data, the issue is that the Home Office themselves deemed people to have withdrawn their applications. So you may have remembered, or you may recall rather, that there was this idea that people sent these questionnaires and they had to fill them in fill them in within 20 days and let's fill them in with English and so on. And these were being sent out to people in hotels and all sorts of accommodation, uh, detention centres, and that wasn't working. But if you didn't do that, you could be deemed to have withdrawn. So yes, there's been some speeding up of the processing. There's been some increase in staff numbers and so to make that happen. But there's also been a large number of people whose claims have been deemed withdrawn. And of course, that therefore brings them outside the system and brings the numbers down. Jacqueline, can I just pick you up on that withdrawal um, uh, situation that you were describing? Because you were saying that very that it seemed to me like you were saying very few people genuinely withdraw their application, but that perhaps withdrawals are being used to fudge the numbers. Is that yes. sort of what you were saying? And if so, how many of these withdrawals do you think are not genuine withdrawals? We don't know the data yet, um, and we're looking at it, but we are seeing, those of us in practice are seeing, so for instance, I liaise very closely with a refugee centre or a community support um, network that works with refugees, and a, a large number of young people, particularly young men coming from the Horn of Africa, who are living in hotels or, or in very, very difficult situations and dis uh, said, have had letters saying that their asylum claims have been withdrawn. Mm and have therefore come to us and asked for help. So said, well, we've not withdrawn it. And then we've realised that it's because they failed to comply with some part of the process, um, which we deem to be an unfair part of the process, and that they've not understood. So we've then been able to get their applications back into the system. And, of course, they're no longer counted as part of the legacy because they're counted as new applicants. So I think there's some fudging of the data. Uh, we don't know the extent of that, though. Uh, Alicia, Sunak... He's come close to clearing the legacy backlog, but he hasn't actually hit his target. Is he still going to try and turn this into a victory and say, look how great we've done? Absolutely. And uh, I, mean, I said it yesterday and it's definitely it still reigns true. A win is a win at the moment for the Conservative <laughs> Party. Any kind of hint that something has gone slightly right is really a bonus for them. Lots of stuff hasn't gone right. So anything, even if it's small, that they can use to say what we're doing is working, even if it's not worked 100 percent, they can say, we actually need more time. You need to keep us in at the general election so that we have time to improve this and grow on this. If you stop, if you kick us out now, then it's just going to end there and we're going to be back to square one. Um, Jacqueline, coming back to the figures and trying to work out what the real picture is rather than how the politicians might spin it. So we've talked about the number of people who are um, de facto being almost made to withdraw when perhaps they weren't withdrawing uh, their assignment. But the people who have been ruled upon, how um, many of those, what percentage of those applications are successful? Because, of course, 
people don't just want to see the backlog sorted. They actually want to see the number of people being successful go down. That's not necessarily what's happening, though. Yes, so around 75% of all claimants, and so that includes people coming across in small boats and also people coming into the UK in other ways who go on to claim asylum, um, are successful. And that's that's huge. That's a, that, that's a huge number of the overall, you know, 75%. It's huge. Um, and that trend is continuing. So most people claiming asylum do go on to prove either to the Home Office in the first instance or to a tribunal um, later on that their claims that they are victims of persecution or that they're fleeing uh, some other thing, I like could be, you know, that they're in a same sex relationship or they're fleeing religious persecution, etc., is actually correct. Um, so the numbers of people, um, you know, getting grants of asylum and becoming refugees is very, very high. And as I said previously, large numbers of people coming, particularly those coming in the small boats, are coming from the sorts of countries where their claims are almost likely to succeed, just mm -hmm. by definition. So Afghanistan being a classic example of yeah. that. And on the point that was just made about, you know, the government looking for quick wins, I mean, fair enough, that's what governments do. But just, just a couple of days ago, we saw the Home Secretary, James Cleverly, um, saying, oh, you know, we've done a wonderful job because the crossings have been down over the Christmas period, you know? And experts have said, well, actually, the crossings that have been down over the Christmas period are absolutely nothing to do with what, you know, yeah. government policy or the Rwanda Safety Bill or the Illegal Migration Act or any of those sorts of things. It's to do with the fact that there are storms That's in it. the yeah, Storm, Storm Garrett. That's it. You're right. So you can spin this any way you want, really. Okay.